Now the process is they've got to call their service manager or whatever you want to name it. And that person may be tied up. That person may not get back with you. That person might, it might be tomorrow before they get back with you. Sure. Well, that's not doing you any good if you're on site at all. Yeah. So it's just making things more efficient, more streamlined. And in my opinion, you don't, again, you don't have human error there. AI has been all the rage. It's in all the news stations. It's in the media. It's on social media. You can't be alive today and not have heard about artificial intelligence and the impact some of these new tools, these new bots have been offering. Today's guest is an expert in all things AI and in fact, bringing some amazing technology, new products to the home services contractor world. I don't want to spoil any more other than that. I want to introduce today's guest, Corey Barrier with ContractorMarketingAI.com. Hey, Corey, welcome to the show. Thank you, brother. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. I'm excited about today's topic. You may not know this, but I'm a total nerd when it comes to new technology. Like, it's just, I love this stuff. And you are working at the forefront of some new technology right now. Is that right? Dude, I feel like we are on, I feel like the, I feel like it's the internet again. I feel like it was the internet, like when, when the internet came out, I feel like that's what we're dealing with right now. It's moving so fast and look, a lot of people have no idea what's going on, but. Oh, I'm one of them. (laughs) Well, look, we work with a lot of people in the, in the home services industry and they're typically slow adopters to a lot of things. And that's not a knock on the people in the home services industry, but. At the end of the day, like this could move your business a hundred times faster. But also you could be left behind a hundred times faster too. Oh yeah. And you know, here on Talent Tackle Box, we talk about people. We talk about what you got to do to attract people, retain people, keep them motivated, everything else. It's no secret. It's a challenge to find good people right now. It's a challenge to keep good people. Everybody's out there. We're all fishing for the same group of people. and technology is something that I'm a huge fan of because when you automate the predictable, the things that are important in your business, the things that you know that are going to happen all the time, and you automate that, give it to a computer to do, then we can go focus on the things that we need people for. With this world of AI and what's coming out right now, and this artificial intelligence and these these amazing bots that are out there, we can predict that our customers are always going to need support. They're always going to need to be taken care of. They're always going to need someone that's got their back. And in the world of Amazon same-day delivery, we don't want to wait for you to get back to me because you're short-staffed. And so you, you've been working on some cool stuff from what I understand, but we both have a passion for the trades, home services. And I think we're going to talk about some ways that people can do this, implement this new technology inside their business and make sure that they are providing that level of support that their customers not only wants, but deserves. A hundred percent. Look, at this stage of the game, AI can do things better. Not all AI and not all humans, but the truth of the matter is, if you take out the human element in the things that are mundane, the things Mm -hmm. that, as you mentioned, that happen every single day, it frees up the human being to do things that they're really good at. Yeah, that's a big part of what we do is how do you get the the humans to focus on human stuff. And too often we're caught in administrative work or paperwork or learning new computer systems and all this other stuff just to run our business. We don't get to do the people stuff. And that's what we need to focus on. So tell me, what is it that you're seeing in this world of AI? Maybe not so much what you're working on right now, although I think that's getting ready to come out, but what are you seeing? What's the opportunity for people out there that are looking to automate some parts of their business that they can predict? There's a lot of things that I hate doing. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things that most contractors hate doing. Yeah. And that's really what landed me in this space is because ultimately I don't swing a hammer and I don't turn a wrench, but I think and act very similar to most contractors. Yeah. I even talk like most contractors. I cuss a lot. <laughs> the point is, is like a lot of us have ADHD. A lot mm. of us have ADHD and that's frustrating. Think about if you can tie together those things that you forget or slip through the cracks, the deals that you forget about, the customers that you meant to call back, that could go down the list for days. 
If you can automate those things, or as you mentioned, bot, for example, we have contractor marketing AI is the business that we just launched. And inside of that, we can train a bot to answer questions just like you're answering questions, whether that be to your customers or whether that be to your technicians, right? We can train it on SOPs. We could train on pricing. We could train on anything that we want to train it on. And so guess what? That's 24 hours a day, seven days a week for a small fee. You don't have to depend on a human necessarily to answer the phone at 2 a.m. Not that anybody's doing that, but people do get calls at 2 a.m., emergency calls. You sure. never know. A human being could absolutely sleep through that call. It's human nature. And human beings have bad days. They get angry and upset. They have bad moods. They get short with customers. I know that people listening right now have no idea what we're talking about when we talk about their customer service reps and not always taking care of their, their customers, but they do. And they call in sick. There's so many things that people do. And I'm not saying that we need to replace people with the, the bots. But what I am saying is that there are some things that we don't need people to do so that people can focus on people things, that things that bots will never be able to do, like show compassion and, and empathize and create a connection with your customer. Bots won't be able to do that. But if our people are so focused on that administrative component and learning new software, like you said, all of the, the as soon as you were talking, I was like, this is why we all have service Titan, right? Like it's because we, ha we have to control our business and we need to get our arms around it. But if our people are so focused on doing that stuff, that tech work, the administrative work, we can't focus on the, the people side of the business for sure. And people are the business. At the end of the day, if you don't invest in people, you don't have a business, right? Absolutely. So we're not saying that you need to have a bunch of robots running your business. That's not what we're saying at all. I'm yeah, not, not saying that's all. not going to happen in the future because anything could happen. But at the end of the day, I like, I love people. I love working with people. I love talking to people. And I think, I don't know if most people do, maybe not at most people, but look, and the other thing to that, the other side of that coin is I hear people say all the time, well, I don't know if my customers are going to want to talk to a bot. Mm -hmm. I would argue that a lot of your customers would rather talk to a bot <laughs> because quite <laughs> frankly, if it's just a simple question, like, uh, when can you come and do the maintenance? Or like if you're on a maintenance agreement, for example, do you really need to talk to a human being to go schedule that? No, you really don't. And we live in a in a digital world. We do. It's not uncommon for me to, and, and I, I'm more of a guy that'll pick up the phone, but my wife, on the other hand, she will sit for 30 minutes longer so she doesn't have to pick up the phone. You know, it's funny you say that. We Right now we're running into a lot of people that are struggling to get new applicants to get connected with them. So these people apply on Indeed, the application comes in and they pick up the phone. The employer picks up the phone and calls the person. Nobody picks up the phone for a number they don't know anymore. Nobody. And it goes to voicemail and then they're frustrated. I mean, how many times, I've, this happens to me probably a dozen times a week where I call and they're like, voicemail is full. I'm like, well, they're not checking their voicemails. People don't want to talk anymore. They just want to be quick to the point. And so when we implement text messaging, we just say, text them. Right. Boom. All of a sudden, people are getting right back to them because they don't want the conversation. They don't want to talk to you. Just text them. And then there's a belief, well, if they aren't going to talk on the phone, how are they going to serve my customers? I'm like, that's different. Once they're in the job, it's different. Right now, they're being sold. Like, that's right. They don't want to talk. I'm with you. I'm with you. And people don't like being sold. People no. love to buy, but they don't like being sold. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit more about this contractor marketing AI, what you got going on over there, what you're finding out about how you're going to roll this out. There's so much buzz about AI. We could probably talk for hours on this, Yeah. but keep us focused. What are the things that our listeners need to know as it relates to what you're doing over there? One of the biggest things that we've implemented is a follow-up process. So we've made it really simple to, for, for contractors to follow up. We've made it really simple for the interaction with the bot to book a call straight on the calendar. Now, it doesn't work for everybody, but if you're missing a phone call from a customer, let's just say you're a million dollar a year company, yeah. right? you're doing everything. You're wearing multiple hats. So the chances of you missing a call is probably pretty good. Yep. And the chances that you forget to call that person back are fairly good. Mm -hmm. We've implemented a bot that would pick up after the voicemail picks up as a trigger. 
and it takes down the information, right? It get, and gets them to your calendar if that's what you so choose. It takes them wherever you want it to take them. So it makes it simple, it's streamlined, and it's easy. And it's easy on the customer. And that's really the main focus is you want it to be easy for the customer. Yeah, it's that customer experience that I love talking about. There are things that we can predict. Like I said earlier, we know that when a customer wants to follow up on their maintenance agreement or schedule their maintenance agreement and get value from that, it's a pretty simple process. Like we know what they want. Got to find a time that works, find a time that a tech's available, get it scheduled, get it on the calendar so dispatch can take care of it. That's pretty simple and straightforward, like you were saying. And we can have a bot help us with that so that when there is a problem and they have questions or they want to connect with a human, your team's freed up for that stuff. That's right. So don't look at this like they're, we were trying to replace everybody. Look at it like we're just we're making their job more efficient by giving other alternatives. It's, it's almost like they're going to level up to doing sort of different things, not super different things, but they're going to help you implement things into your business that are going to be that's going to move it forward much faster. I, you know, I hear programming a bot. I hear, oh, you're going to do this. I saw one company implement a bot for some recruiting. It was like 900 questions that the company owner had to answer to tell this bot how to respond. And I saw that and I go, no wonder it takes six months to roll this out. You don't strike me as the kind of guy that first off is going to help figure out what 900 questions to answer, nor are you going to ask your customers to do that. So tell me, how does this work? How do we program these things? And, and give us the layman's version. You're right, Brian. There's two different kind of bots. There is one that there are bots that you can program exactly the way you said, and I am not the guy to do that. I can okay. promise you. But how you, let's take Service Titan, for example. We are connected with their API. If you're on Service Titan, your contractor, you already have the data, or you already have the calls, you already have the information, you already have all your stuff in the computer. And in layman's terms is, it's like we suck it out, right? We, we There's a connection between between our, our API, their API, and they talk to one another. I guess just picture it like you, like an old telephone cord. It's connected to the base and you hear the sound, right? Yeah. There's like an invisible cord that talks back and forth and brings over the information from your company into the bot. And that's how we train it. We train it on your exact data. So it knows Ryan was a customer three years ago and he's calling again. Now there's opportunities, not just maintenance opportunities or what Ryan is dealing with today, but maybe there's upsell opportunities. Like we can actually, you can actually program it to say, here's how I want you to think when it connects to that customer. Is that, is that right? That's right. So how do you program this thing to think? Or is that something? Stop turning away work, burning out your team and working so hard. Learn about the proven process that businesses everywhere are using to save time, save money and hire all the people they need. We'll train your team to implement and run this process in-house so you can grow as fast as you want. Book a call with our team at corematters.com. It's just above my pay grade. <laughs> it's going to be way too well, much. It's above my pay grade too, but I, we, have a code, we have coders that do it. Okay. So if I, if I own a home service company, let's say I own an HVAC company, I'm, like, I'm on service site and I like this idea of having something that can pull the data, talk to the customer, like it knows what it's talking about. For me, I, I had that reservation of, oh, I've seen the 900 questions, but I don't have to do that. What's it like to get this implemented? How, how easy is this process to get something up and running? How, how long does it take? Depends on how much data, depends on if there are specifics that you wanted to, because look, you can really train it to do just about anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it's just a booking bot, that's very simple, right? And we don't really have to pull a ton of data for that. Yeah. But if you want it specifics, like if you say, well, I want to train it to talk with my technicians, right? You say, all right, well, I want the Ryan bot to, all, to have Ryan customer service bot. And then I want the Ryan employee bot. That employee bot, right? You're going to be able to train, we will be able to train it on your SOPs, your processes, all the things that are specific to your company, right? Wow. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so now, guess what? You've got a service manager typically. Well, now you've not necessarily cut that guy out, but you've reduced his workload tremendously because they could just message in through Slack and get their questions answered whenever they want to. 
Wow. So with this bot, we already know what kind of equipment this customer has on their home. That comes out of service Titan, the equipment. But then when the tech gets stuck in the field because they have a troubleshooting issue or a question or, hey, how do we deal with this? They can just shoot that message in and then the bot will look through all of my SOPs and say, this is how at this company, this is how we do it. So it's like a training bot, too. Yes. Wow. Did yeah. they cook me dinner on Friday nights? Like, <laughs> I'm like well, probably will give you recipes for sure. <laughs> of course. <laughs> These things are hooked up to the internet. You'll probably do anything we ask it to. Wow, that's crazy. So this is brand new. I have not heard of this before. So my guess is, is you are at the forefront of this. I would say so, yes. And it sounds amazing. Here's, here's what I'm thinking, though. There's probably some people this isn't the right fit for, right? There's some people that's probably going to be really hard to get this implemented or like, what's the right person for this, the right company profile for someone that they're like, this sounds awesome, too good to be true, but you know what? I fit the mold. So like, help me understand that. Sure. Well, you've got to be using a CRM and it's got to be the data. So the, look, that's the key. The data is the key. If you have the data, the training, the model is not that hard. If you don't have the data, and look, there are people out there that still use pen and paper, believe it or not, that would not be a good fit. That would yeah. be impossible, right? It'd be impossible to do. Not to mention that guy's going to have a hard time wrapping his head around yeah. this to begin with. But if you've got a CRM, it's pretty simple. Mm. If you're doing, I don't know, a million or more, to be sure you're using a CRM and you qualify. But that's it, really. You just got to be able to have good data because it's good in, good out, bad in, bad out. You, you can't train it on half-ass data. You just can't. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're going to get half-ass answers. One of the things you said to me I, I'm really interested in is this employee bot. Tell me about that a little bit more. So I see the customer service side, being able to do bookings, being able to support the customers, answer questions for them, when's my maintenance agreement up, all those kinds of things. I see that. That's pretty easy for me. Help me understand this employee bot that you had mentioned, the SOPs and What's the vision for that? Well, the vision for that really is to make your, for example, the technicians to be able to message in and get answers to their questions immediately. Because now the process is they've got to call their service manager or whatever you want to name it. And that person may be tied up. That person may not get back with you. That person might, it might be tomorrow before they get back with you. Sure. Well, that's not doing you any good if you're on site at all. Yeah. So it's just making things more efficient more streamlined. And in my opinion, you don't, again, you don't have human error there. I imagine you got to have some SOPs written out or something that the computer can read, right? Digitally. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Which totally speaks to my heart because that's what we do over here at Core Matters is we get all your SOPs when it comes to onboarding your people, engaging your people, training your people, all that. We get all those SOPs dialed in. It sounds like a match here, Corey, that you and I are talking right now. Huge opportunities. Now, can these bots do things, I guess, like on schedule? Absolutely. Where you could say, hey, every Tuesday morning, I want you to do this. So imagine it like you would set up a trigger in a funnel, mm. right? It's, you would just trigger the bot to do whatever it is you wanted it to do at the time. Whatever, the, what it, you could schedule it. Look, like if it's, if you just go and install a hot water heater and you want to make sure that you're reaching out to that person in five years, then you schedule the bot to reach out in five years, which seems crazy, but it works. Wow. Wow. I'm already seeing the implications here long term. I imagine you could say, hey, every morning at 6 a.m., figure out the route for every tech today, right? And now absolutely, dispatchers aren't sitting there Google mapping things and figuring things out. The bot's doing it, sending it automatically. And your dispatcher can focus on things like dealing with uh, rerouting requests or rescheduling or changing the, the jobs that they have to visit that day. They can focus on more of those things that are a little bit more manual process and the bots can handle this stuff. Uh, this is cool stuff, Corey. So uh, how, how do people learn more about this? Like, I want to go check this out. I want to learn about this, even, even thinking about my business. And I'm not even a home services contractor. How do we find out more? So they can go to contractormarketingai.com. Go check it out. A lot of people don't want to give prices over the phone, right? Mm -hmm. Most, let's just call it nine times out of 10. You're probably not going to get a price out of a contractor over the phone. Yeah. Well, there's many reasons for that. We could go through them all, but there's no point. Anybody that's listening to this contractor understands what I'm saying. 
So we figured out a way that we can implement a website that will actually give you an estimate, right? So it asks you questions. So if it's an AC unit, they'll ask you, how old is it? And let's just pretend they're not in your system. They're brand new customer. How old's the unit? When did you have it serviced? Well, how often you should change your filters? Da, 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 da. Because they're not going to know specifics. Yeah. And then what it'll do in an almost an instant is give you an estimate. And, and let's just call it, it's the lowest estimate in your city up to the highest estimate in your city. Mm. If it's me, at least I have something to go off of. At least I have something. Yeah. yeah. And then it'll send them a link to sign up for finance. Wow, that's cool. I think so. And this thing, this thing can, we were talking earlier about how people don't want to talk. So I imagine this thing can send emails, it can send texts, it can really communicate with the customer where they want to be communicated with. 100%. Wow. Can't have a human to human conversation yet. I'm, I'm sure that is coming <laughs> without a doubt, but we're not there yet. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that text to speech stuff that's out now and it's creepy. Like creepy, <laughs> but yeah, it's wild. I can see how that stuff can be beneficial, especially like dropping voicemails and and doing those kinds of things. If the bot's able to do that kind of stuff, I, and this is this is some cool stuff. So contractormarketingai.com dot com is where they can learn about this stuff. And you've got a an offer for our listeners, some freebie or a giveaway for everybody listening. We're going to give you a step by step process to build your own bot on your own website. And look, it will. If you have the patience to go through it and you have the patience to deal with it, by all means, you can absolutely do it. Hmm. On the other hand, you can also call us and we can do it for you. Oh, I like the Doug yeah, for I'm you. happy to give it away. Yeah, me too. I'm a big <laughs> fan of the Doug for you, <laughs> especially with the amount of value. I mean, not that we want to start replacing people, but even if just think about the cost of one customer service rep, like just think about what cost to have the person there. Maybe you don't have the best performer on your team or something like that. I imagine this bot is going to be no brainer when you compare it against one salary or heck, even five hours a week of salary is probably a no brainer for that. And we don't have to deal with pricing because I'm sure that's going to change and everything. But contractormarketingai.com, I love it. Corey, this is such a cool topic. There's so much going on. I cannot wait to circle back with you in a couple months and see how much it's transformed and how much it's changed and let our listeners know what's up over there. I imagine this is one of those industries where you woke up this morning by the time you're done with your Wheaties that it changed. If you're in a couple months, it's going to be even more so. Without a doubt. Thanks for being on the show, Corey. My pleasure. 